You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. I wanted a little on the sticky side. With a modest kitchen and some standard equipment, you can cook food that you would be proud to serve. There is my shrimp. All you need is a few helpful kitchen techniques, the ability to follow a recipe, a passion for food, and a fascination with cooking. Just follow along the rib cage. That is so good. My name is Dennis. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I'm going to get back to basics a little bit today for a couple of reasons. One is I got some comments, I received some comments from some people who said that one of the things they like about my videos is that I don't just cook a recipe in front of the camera, but that I teach some techniques that I learned from watching other chefs cook like Gordon Ramsay or Julia Child. What I want to do today is I want to do a basic recipe from which you can expand into other things. I'm going to make a simple pasta. and I'm going to make my pasta from scratch, but you don't have to do that. It's actually going to be a tagliatella with a cream sauce, a butter cream sauce. If you've seen my video or my recipe for seafood fettuccine, which is the videos on YouTube, the, the recipes on my website, that's basically what I start off with. It, it's a simple pasta with a cream sauce to which I add seafood, in my case shrimp, and some seasoning. You can go a lot of different directions with this basic recipe, tagliatella with cream sauce. Now another thing I want to do is because this is other comments that I've heard, people have asked, have you thought about using a rolling pin rather than a pasta machine to roll your pasta, your dough? Well finally I'll have an excuse to use this. I've had this for a long time. It still has the label on it because I don't I never use it. A lot of things I do, I just roll it out by hand and I have a pasta machine. So I'm gonna roll my pasta today. And what I want to try, and I, I haven't done this in a long time. I saw this only one time on television, and supposedly it's a lost art. You don't roll pasta dough. You stretch it and you keep slowly stretching, 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 stretching so that you stretch it out rather than rolling it out. It it's, gives it a different texture. It doesn't have that compressed texture from forcing the dough between two rolls, two rollers rather, but it has a, a stretched lighter, fluffier, I guess, texture. I don't know how to describe it, but I have seen it done on television. I've done it myself one time, so I know it is doable. It's just going to be a real challenge to do it because it's been a long time and I got to remember how I did it. Although how much is there to know about stretching pasta? So that's what I want to do today. The first thing I want to do is prepare my pasta dough because that has to sit for a while to let the flour absorb some of the moisture from the, the, the eggs. And I'm going to put some oil in there and it'll be more workable after it sits for a few hours. So let's start off by making pasta dough. And again, I need to tell you, you don't need to make your own pasta from scratch for, for this recipe. I do it because I like making pasta. But you can buy the fettuccine, if you can find it, the tagliatella. They're almost identical. Buy it in the store, dry, and cook it according to package directions. It's a lot easier, but if you enjoy making pasta from scratch like I do, then why not do it? So let's start making pasta dough. I've got three large eggs here that I'm going to work with. This is going to make enough pasta to feed four to six people. As far as how big a large egg is here in the USA, weighed, they're about two ounces or 57 grams each in the shell. So you can see how that compares with the eggs in your country. And then I have about three quarters of a cup each of two different kinds of flour. This is three quarters of a cup, four and a half ounces, 128 grams of durum wheat semolina. This is a hard wheat and it'll give me a more al dente, a more chewy pasta. This is three quarters of a cup, three and three quarter ounces, 106 grams of all-purpose flour. I like working with both. A lot of stores now are carrying 
this Durham Wheat Semolina. You don't have to use it. For many years, I didn't. I used all-purpose flour. You can. So that would be one and a half cups or seven and a half ounces, 213 grams of all-purpose flour. I'm probably going to add more flour. But I'm going to start off with those. I typically add a little bit more to get the dough stiff enough to bring it up to the driest point, the dry point where it's ready to knead. Oh, and here's a trick too. I see people breaking their eggs on the edge of a bowl. It's not the best way. The edge of the bowl can push eggshells into the egg and then you have little bits of eggshells in your bowl. Just crack it on the counter and it cracks the shell without getting a lot of without getting eggshells inside. All right. I'm going to wipe my hands here and then I'm going to put a pinch of salt in there. When you're making fresh pasta, you put salt in the pasta dough. When you're cooking dry pasta, you salt the water. Very simple reason why. Fresh pasta is going to cook in 30 seconds to a minute. It's not going to absorb a lot of water because the moisture is already in the pasta dough from the eggs. Therefore, to get salt in, you put salt in at the beginning. Dry pasta is made without salt and you Therefore, you put salt in the water, and as the dry pasta, over the 10 to 12 minutes that it's cooking, as it absorbs that salted water, it'll take on a little bit of a salty flavor. Now, I know I'm going to use all of this. Oh, before I do that, though, I want to get these beat up. And then for the sake of making a little bit of a smoother dough, I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And get this all mixed up and then I'm just going to dump in all of my flour because I know I'm going to need all of this flour. Most traditional methods have you put the flour on the counter first and then you break the eggs into it and mix it all together. I do it backwards. I do it in a bowl with the eggs going in first. It's just a lot easier to clean up. I can move this bowl to the sink. It's my chance to use my granny fork here, which I rarely ever get to use. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is a wet sticky dough. I knew I was going to need a little bit more of my pasta flour and my whole wheat, I mean my all-purpose flour. So now I start putting it in like a pinch at a time maybe a tablespoon or so at a time. And actually at this point I can start working this with my hands. So I'm going to just flour this to get the dough off my granny fork. Set that aside and start kneading in my flour here. I want a dough that's fairly stiff and dry. Soft and pliable, but I don't want it wet. It's one of those things that it's hard to say for sure exactly how much you're going to need as far as flour. It depends on what size your eggs are. If you're using jumbo eggs, they're going to absorb more flour. But if you're using medium-sized eggs, smaller than these large eggs, they'll absorb less flour. I don't need much more here, so I'm just going to put a little bit of a pinch of each and work that in. Okay, I'm ready to move this onto the counter now and knead it. That's stiff enough to knead. That's a nice texture, but you can see it needs to be kneaded. And then to knead this, you kind of just use the heel of your hand and kind of smear the dough into the counter. So work in the last of that flour. 
Okay, this is feeling pretty smooth. It's not workable yet as far as running through a pasta machine or rolling. I can tell by the way that it's tearing, that it's not smooth yet. But what you do is you wrap this up and let it sit for two or three hours. You can actually make it a day in advance and let it, in the, let it sit in the refrigerator. If you're gonna store it longer than that, you vacuum seal it. I'll show you that in a bit. My pasta dough now has been sitting for a while, at least a couple of hours. So this is ready for me to work with. As I said, I made more than I typically do when I do one of these demonstrations. I'm not gonna cook all of this up today, but I'm gonna show you how I protect pasta for storage. If you just leave it wrapped in plastic like this, the cellophane, and put it in the refrigerator, within 24 to 48 hours, the oxygen gets to it and it turns this ugly grayish, brownish, green color. I don't know whether it's poisonous or not, but it certainly doesn't look appetizing. It doesn't look like something you'd want to eat. So to keep this creamy color, vacuum seal it. And that's what I'm going to do. And the reason why I'm going to vacuum seal this is because it, it's an ideal way to store it in the freezer. And then weeks later, you can take it out of the freezer, thaw it in the refrigerator, and you've got fresh pasta dough to work with. I can tell by the feel of that, that's nice and moist. I could work a little bit more flour into that, which I might do in the process of making my tagliatella. But right now, I'm gonna prepare this for vacuum sealing. What I'm doing is I'm flattening it out and I'm kind of pinching it thin around the edges in doing this because that'll help the vacuum sealer to get all the air out right up to the edge. And that'll fit in there fine. This is one of my vacuum seal pouches. And then put that in the vacuum sealer. This is a bit noisy. I've done this many times. And there it is. Okay, this is my other piece of pasta. Just going to very, very lightly flour that and start pulling it and pushing it. If you want to roll the pasta, roll it that way. You can keep rolling, rolling, rolling until you get it down thin enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start stretching this. So to do that, I'm going to use my roller my rolling pin to kind of pull on a wide distance of my dough. Just keep working against that resistance. It'll resist it, but just keep working, working, working. And little by little, you want to be gentle with it so you don't tear it see that it's just starting to tear a little bit right there. And just keep working that. And that will get bigger and bigger and bigger. As I said, I've done this once before and I know it works. And I only saw this one time on a TV show where they claimed that stretching pasta was becoming a lost art. And you can see how that's starting to spread out. I switched to a dowel here because I had it. It's a little bit lighter to work with rather than that heavy 
rolling pin and what I'm seeing now is I'm seeing like right here and right here this dough is getting so thin that it's starting to become a little bit transparent so I'm holding that area because I don't want to stretch that area anymore but where it's a little bit thicker like it is right here I'm stretching that however this is coming to the point now where it feels like it's just going to start tearing if I pull it anymore. See, it's a little bit right there. It's a little bit too thin. So I'm going to leave this. There it is. See the tearing? So that's my indication. It's time to call this quits as far as the stretching. But I stretched that dough out pretty thin. A little bit too thin in a couple of spots. It's thin right there as well. The next thing I want to make is the cream sauce. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by making just a regular, plain, simple butter cream sauce. That you could use that. You could sauce the pasta with that and serve that as a side dish. It's been done. It's in one of my cookbooks. Great way to start if you want to to make something even better and I'm going to show you that as well. But let's just start off by first making the basic cream sauce. I've got a stainless steel skillet heating on the stove here and to which I'm going to be melting. This is six ounces, 170 grams of whole butter. I just want to melt this. And this is why I'm using a stainless steel pan. I want to whisk in some cream. This is two cups, 473 milliliters of heavy cream. And I'm splattering it all over the stove. Maybe I can just do it this way. Okay. Then I'm going to heat that up. Meanwhile, I'm going to wipe up my mess. Before this comes up to the boil, I want to add some white pepper. It's about an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm going to switch to a manual whisk here. Whisk that in. See, it's already starting to get hot. And then I want to grate in some fresh nutmeg. You can use nutmeg from a jar, but I think fresh nutmeg is so much better. Again, whisk that in. I know this is going to need a pinch of salt. But I have one more thing to do. But I want to take this heat off. This is two ounces. 57 grams of freshly grated Romano cheese. You can use Parmesan, Parmigiano. You just basically want to stir that in and then don't touch it because you don't want to make that stringy. Just leave that. This sauce is ready. I have here a large chicken thigh. I'm only going to use one because I'm making a small amount of food. But for this kind of a dish, I figure that one large thigh would easily feed two people. So if you're going to be feeding four to six people, plan on two to three thighs. I'm putting my trim in a little bag over here because I'm going to put that in the freezer. I always buy chicken the cheapest way, bone in, because I get more food out of it. All the trim gets put aside 
and then that goes into the freezer and I use that for making chicken stock. We use a lot of chicken stock especially during winter because that's when I make a lot of soup. So I'm just cutting the bone out. A bit of the joint stays on here. You can buy boneless thigh meat if you want. You could use boneless breast meat for this if you want. So there it is, one boneless chicken thigh. I'm going to cut this into long strips first. If it doesn't seem obvious, let me explain. If you're going to do this, it helps to have a really good sharp boning knife. And then I'm going to cut this across into little bite-sized nuggets. Again, you could do this with breast meat if you wanted. It would be a lot simpler if you just buy boneless breast meat. So there's my chicken meat. Gonna clean up this mess. Switch boards. This is my chicken board. Gonna clean this board, switch boards, and then I'm, I've got some more prep work to do. Now I have some cremini mushrooms here that I want to slice up. If you like shiitakes, you can use shiitakes. I'm not going to use a lot here. I bought a dozen of these, but I don't need them all. I'll save the others for something else. I just need maybe three, maybe four for this dish. You can also buy those white button mushrooms. I buy those a lot too. I really like shiitakes. They can be a bit expensive, but I do like them. For this dish, however, these mushrooms will be fine. Okay, that's enough. So those are my mushrooms. My prep work is done. I'm ready to start cooking. I've got a skillet heating on the stove here into which I'm going to put about a good tablespoon of butter and this is cooking olive oil. I call this cooking olive oil. It's not extra virgin. I could use extra, extra virgin for this because I'm not going to heat this oil up very hot. I'm going to cook the mushrooms first and I'm going to cook these over a medium low heat. I just want to lightly saute the mushrooms I'm not going to do any browning. I'm just going to cook them until they're tender. That'll take a couple, three minutes. Okay, these are just, just coming up to being cooked. I'm going to transfer these to a bowl and then start cooking my chicken. I return my heat back to my pan or I return the pan, rather, back to the heat. And this is cooking over medium heat. I just want to cook this chicken until it's cooked all the way through. I don't need to brown this. But what I do want to do is put in a little splash of dry sherry, maybe a tablespoon, just a little bit. And this is about half a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. This is a quarter teaspoon of ground oregano, not oregano leaf. You could use oregano leaf. But I like the ground oregano in this dish. All right, so I just got to finish cooking this chicken up. And I'll be ready to start assembling my dish. My chicken now is just coming up to being thoroughly cooked. I'm going to put my mushrooms in there, and then this is some of my cream sauce that I made earlier. And then I want to just put a little bit of lemon juice in there. This is from my neighbor's tree. I brag about my neighbor that she has a lemon tree, and she doesn't use her lemons. 
So she's always telling me, come take the lemons, come take the lemons. Otherwise they just fall on the ground and she's gonna pick them up, and throw them into the trash. The lemon juice is gonna do two things in this dish. It's gonna brighten the flavor a little bit and because that's cream, heavy cream, the acid in the lemon juice will thicken that a little bit because it'll curdle that cream just a little bit. Now I've got to taste that. Ah, oh, that is excellent the way it is. I'm not going to add any salt to that. I'm going to turn the heat off. My sauce is done. I just have to do my pasta. Okay, here's my stretched pasta dough to cut this into tagliatella. I want longish noodles. I'm cutting from both sides first. And you want to cut them about the width of fettuccine. And I'm going to cut this in half. Just dust this lightly with flour so that it doesn't stick. Flip it over and then do the other side. Beautiful. How's my water doing? It's just, my water is just coming up to the boil. I'm just going to lightly flour that so it doesn't stick to itself. It should be okay. There's my tagliatella. As soon as my water comes to the boil, I will cook that and then we'll be ready to plate. To plate this, look at those noodles. Again, you could use store-bought fettuccine or tagliatella. If you can find it, and then I want to put some of my chicken and mushrooms on there. This sauce thickened up just a little bit. Spoon that over the top. Make sure there's plenty on the pasta. A little bit more on top and that's it so there it is that's my basic buttercream sauce that I started off with as I said you can do a lot with that I've made seafood fettuccine with it in this case I did a mushroom and chicken sauce to go over my homemade tagliatella again you could use store-bought pasta for this so the last step is to see how this tastes I haven't made this in quite a while, but I have made it a lot in the past. Get some of my mushroom and my chicken here, first of all. Mmm. See that fresh lemon juice does brighten that flavor up a little bit. Some of my homemade pasta here. perfect texture. It has an al dente texture to it. Oh, that <laughs> is a fantastic meal. So excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy an early dinner. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the homepage or in the recipe archive.